Let's take a look at a really cool filter trick where I show you how to filter by missing data. In other words, we're not filtering by what we know, we're filtering by what we don't know. Now, not only is this a really cool trick, but once we have our results, I'm gonna show you another really cool trick when it comes to sorting. And this trick will show you how to sort a list of names like these where the full name is in a single cell and it's first name, last name, order, but we want to sort by last name. So make sure you stick around for that bit of trickery. Be sure to download this file from the link in the video description so you can follow along with the starter file or just open up the solution file and take a look at all the formulas. So here's the scenario. Let me zoom out just a little bit. We have a list of names in column A of people who signed up for an event. And in this list, I have 30 names. Now, after we had the event, we recorded all of the people who attended and there were 20 people. But what we need to generate is a list of people who did not attend. So we know who was supposed to be there. We just don't know who the missing people are. Let's zoom back in so we can actually see what's going on. In order to figure out who's missing from the original list in column A, we have to perform two tests. The first is to check to see if the person in column F, the attended list, is actually in column A. And if they are, I want to count how many times. In this case, each name should only be in the list one time, but you could have duplicates. So let's start with a count if function. I want to count this list in column F. Now, if this is the only time I'm doing this, I'll just highlight the names. But if I'm going to use this file for other purposes, and this list might be longer in those cases, we might want to just go in here and change this so that the end range is something that we think we'll never get to. Now, the problem is I don't want to test all of those empty cells as well. So after the colon, we're going to use the new dot operator. And the dot operator says only go as far as there's data, but don't go past F1000. So this way, I'm only testing cells where I actually have data. Comma, the criteria I'm going to use to count will start in A2 and go all the way through. And like before, I'm going to pick a range that I think I'll never get to, like 1,000. But I also don't want to test all those empty cells. So after the colon, I'll put that dot operator. Put a close parenthesis on the end, hit enter. And anywhere where a name was discovered, I get a one because that person occurred one time in the list. Anywhere where the name was not discovered, I get a zero. So in the original list of column A, anybody with a zero next to their name is a person that did not attend. In Excel, zeros are treated as false and ones are treated as true. Now, since the filter is only going to keep what is true, we need to flip all of these ones and zeros. So the people who did not attend get a one and the people who did attend get a zero. I like to solve these problems in separate stages just so I can keep track of what's going on. So in column D, we're going to say equals, and to flip the zeros and the ones, we're going to use a not operator. I'm going to point to the first test in column C, and because I want to test all of the results of that count if function, I'll follow that up with a pound sign. That way it selects the entire spilled array of results. Close parentheses, hit enter, and now anybody who was not discovered is designated as a true. Anybody who was discovered is designated as a false. Now to generate the list of missing names, we'll use a filter function, and we're going to filter the list that starts with A2 and goes all the way through A1000. Remember to go after the colon and add the dot operator so we only actually filter where we have data. So that's my filter array, comma. What am I going to filter by? I'm going to filter by all of these true false responses, but I only have to click the first one and follow it up with a pound sign because that will select the entire spilled array of true false results. Now I could stop right here, but just to make this a little more robust, if everybody attended my event and there were no missing names, I'll write some sort of message like no absentees, close parentheses, hit enter. As you can see from my name counts in my titles, I started with 30 people signed up for the event, 20 people attended, 10 people are missing, because these are the people I might want to get in contact with to see what happened why they missed the event. If I were to go to the bottom of the attendees list and I added one of those missing people, like Mel Kaminsky, when I hit enter, notice that the missing list just went from 10 to 9. If I were to delete Mel Kaminsky from the attendees list, the missing list just went from 9 to 10. Now suppose you didn't want to have to create these helper columns. Let's see how we could write this formula and do everything in one cell. The first thing we could do is when we point to D2, which is that not and then point to C2 operation, 
We could take this, let's copy that, control C, and back in the final formula, we could replace this D2 pound reference with the not C2 pound reference. Hit enter, the list doesn't change. But at this point, we could take column D and just delete it. We don't need it anymore because we're performing the not operation within this final formula. Likewise, this current reference to C2 in the entire spilled array, what if we were to go to C2 and highlight that formula, control C copy, and then go to the final formula and replace the C2 reference with the count if. Press enter, nothing changes. But what that allows us to do now is to take column C and get rid of it. We have our list of people who attended the event. We have our list of people who did not attend the event. I'm going to hit undo and bring those helper columns back just so that the next examples are simpler. Let's now look at some really cool sorting techniques. This list that was returned by the filter function is returned in the order that the names are discovered in the original signup list, but I would like these names to be in alphabetical order. So I'm going to take that filter function, I'm going to copy it, and just so we don't lose what we already have, I'll make another test column. But let's paste that formula, and this time we're going to wrap the filter function inside of a sort function. And I'll accept all the defaults for the sort function. Hit enter, and now we get the names of the missing people in sorted order. The problem is they're sorted in first name order. I need them sorted in last name order. Now you might be thinking to yourself, but there's no way to sort this data by last name without splitting the names into two separate columns, one for the first name, one for the last name. Well, let's look at a really cool trick for sorting full names in first name, last name order, but to be able to sort by the last name. I'm gonna to go to column L, and what we're going to do is we're going to use a sort by function because we're going to sort this list by a temporary derived list of last names. Now, how do we get a temporary derived list of last names? We can get that list by using a text after function. Our first step is to see how to get all the last names from the original signup list of column A. So we'll use a text after function. We're gonna to point to A2 through, and this is where I'm going to use that dot operator to say go as far as A1000, but don't include any of the empty cells. So that's the text I'm looking through, comma. At what point do I want to start extracting text? And I want that to be after a space. So in double quotes, I'll put a space. So everything after that space is the text I'm going to grab. Close parentheses, hit enter. And notice this is a complete list of the last names from column A. Now, as before, this list has to be reduced based on the true-false results of column D. So within this reference of text after, we're going to wrap that in a filter function, and we will filter A2 through A1000 based on the results of the spilled array in D2. Close parentheses, press enter. Now we have the last names of the missing people. This is what we want to sort the original full name list of missing people. We now want to take the list of full names of the missing individuals and sort them by the last name list of missing individuals. So back in our formula, we will use a sort by function. The sort by is going to use the original formula that derived the list of missing people. Now, if you don't remember what that was, I'm going to hit escape. Back in our original unsorted test results, I'm going to take this filter function and copy it, control C. Back in the text after function, we'll go to the beginning of that formula, and we're going to nest this text after in a sort by function. Open parentheses, the array we wish to sort, control V for paste, that's the original filter function that derived the full name list of missing people. Comma, we're going to sort the first list by the second list of last name only. Make sure we go to the end and add our final close parentheses for the sort by, press enter, and we have a list of missing individuals in alphabetical order by last name. As before, you could wrap up the column C and D test within this single formula and have just one formula that accomplishes the entire mission. If you're curious to see what that formula looks like, here's the solution file, and I'm going to click in cell N2. Because we have so many things happening at the exact same time, when that happens, I usually start to leverage the power of the let function. If I expand my formula bar, here is that entire formula. I like to use the let function because I like all the practice I can get. It's an incredibly powerful function, and any chance that I can practice and hone my let skills, the better. So here's the original filter function that performs the count if, flips the results using a not operator, 
and then filters the all names column, which in this case is A2 through A1000, and filters it. If everybody attended, we have a no attendees message. But for the sorting portion, we use the sort by, and we use that list of missing people and sort that list by the temporarily derived list of last names from column A. So the same thing's happening. I've just created temporary variables of the column of people who had signed up versus the column of people who attended. So that way in my formula, it's like having temporary named ranges for all of these things. It makes for cleaner formulas. So in this solution file off to the side here, I have all of the formulas for all of the stages of development, plus the final all-in-one formula using let. Remember to download these files from the link in the video description so you could practice this and go in and see all of my documentation. Do you think this is something you'd ever use? Have you ever wanted to filter a list by last name without splitting the data? Well, now you know how to do that. And if you've got a more creative way of solving this problem, put that down in the comments because I always like to see how you do things. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.